Terrell. I'm president of the Seattle City Council, and on behalf of the Seattle City Council, we'd like to again thank all of you for sharing this time with us. I also want to make a special acknowledgement to our Seattle Public School District and uh, Principal Keith Smith for letting us into your home. I know we have uh, School Board President Leslie Harris here and School Board members Betty Patu and Eden Mack. We want to thank you for joining us as well. We have uh, some council members here, and you know that flu bug is going around, so a few just couldn't avoid it. But we do, I do want to recognize uh, council member Teresa Mosqueda, who is our at-large member here. Council members Lisa Herbold from District 1, council member Deborah Juarez, live in District 5, as she says. Council member Michael O'Brien, District 6. And after me, you'll hear from uh, Nishe Petty, the Rainier Beach School student body, school body president. And I think it very appropriate that we, when we talk about the state of the city, we do hear from the youth, and in particular, the youth who can inspire us and help create a vision of what we could be. Now, that is why I'm actually excited to serve with Mayor Durkin as a fellow elected public servant. I think she is obsessed with the concept of what this city could be particularly when we generate new ideas that work and we stay committed to our values of inclusion, excellence, compassion, and faith. So over the weekend, I had the pleasure of seeing the movie, The Black Panther. And you see, I believe in Wakanda, where women can lead us into the next generation of STEM where heroes and heroines can defy negative stereotypes. And most importantly, where I could still wear some of my colorful clothes that I have in the 1970s. <laughs> I once told a mayor that I work with that sometimes you have to trust some of the people that work around you, that trust some of us really do put the needs of the city before our own needs or our own egos. Sometimes you have to trust that what you see is what you get and we can help you accomplish your vision. I believe Mayor Durkin can help us achieve our vision and she too is defying stereotypes. She will listen to you and many communities and many other leaders to understand what their vision is and what your vision is and what her vision is. And as a city, we wanna help her succeed because if she succeeds, we succeed. I have no doubt that she has the intelligence, the tenacity, the integrity, and the commitment to optimize what we as a city can be. So I want to thank all of you this morning for being part of hearing our illustrious mayor describe her vision and the state of the city as we see it today and what it can be tomorrow. Thank you very much. And now you hear from Nishé Petty. And one other thing about Nishé is I found out that she is uh, going to go to Eastern Washington and she's uh, interested in criminal justice now. She knows my daughter and I know her mother and father, so we're like family. But I present to you one of our future leaders, Nishé Petty. Thank you. My name is Nishay Petty and I'm an ACB president here at Rainier Beach, where everybody is a somebody. Looking in at this school from afar, you think of all the stereotypes it comes with. But until you walk through the halls, you won't understand it. The leadership students take, the knowledge and our care our teachers give, our counselor is giving us the moral support we need to make sure we can continue our post-secondary education. The friends of the students at this school and my own we help each other through a lot, whether it's social, personal, family, or even school life. There's always somebody to turn to. Parents are also a big factor, trusting Rainier Beach to give the care that it does to their children, especially my father, my stepmother, and my mother. My father, Jerry Petty, not only has been the best father, but he's been my best friend. I didn't expect my teenage years to be easy, but he made it easy for me, so I don't have to do it by myself. Watching my dad grow as a person and learning more about himself motivated me. I care and love my dad strongly, and although my parents should be proud of their children, I'm proud of him. 
Over the years, my dad wanted to help kids who needed it, and currently he is the director of education for Urban League, an amazing basketball coach at Cleveland High School, a caring father, son, uncle, and brother. That's also why I like the work of our mayor and her plans for Seattle and the people in it. Our mayor gives young women and young children the hope that they can do whatever they put their mind to, to be the first female mayor since the 1920s in Seattle. Strong growing young adults being able to relate to a leader who has so much positivity in store for their lives gives them hope that they can become a leader or be a better leader than they already are. In that order, I want to share my future plans. Next year, I plan to study criminal justice at Eastern Washington to continue my leadership to restore equality and justice for people who need and deserve it, and after receiving my BS, to continue on to law school. Yet, I couldn't have done this without the motivation with all my supporters throughout my life, so I would like to thank my parents, they strive for excellence, and my siblings and I being their motivation, they've achieved so much, and showed me what my hard work looks like. My two beautiful sisters and three handsome brothers, my amazing friends. Now I would like to recognize Seattle Public Schools Superintendent Dr. Larry Nyland, School Board Director Mrs. Betty, Betty Patu, and Eden Mack, City, Seattle City Council President Bruce Harrell, and the amazing former Rainier Beach High School Principal Dwayne Chappelle for all the support and the changes he made at the beach. I would also like to recognize and acknowledge some of the awesome teachers and advisors here at Rainier Beach that are dedicated to ensuring every student is successful. Mr. Evan Tomchik, Mr. Marcus Heron, Mr. Truman Buffett, Mrs. Summer Randolph, Ms. Angie Thomas, and Mrs. Virginia owens Bethia, one of my biggest supporters. Ms. Kenya Wade, my dance advisor who has helped me grow as a woman, and our very own Mayor of Seattle for showing us young women, whatever we want to be, just put your mind to it and you'll succeed. But most importantly, not to be afraid to show the world who you are and be true to yourself. Thank you and welcome to Rainier Beach. Good morning, everyone. My name is Diana Bautista, and I am a proud graduate of Rainier Beach High School. To get out of the poverty of Mexico, my parents had to stop going to school by ninth grade and had to start working long hours of labor. I was brought to America with hopes of the opposite. I was brought here for an opportunity to be somebody. And like so many in our community here in Seattle, the 13th year Palmer Scholarship helped open a door to college for me. Being a first generation college student, I applied for a scholarship. Soon, I was accepted I was accepted into South Seattle College and the 13th year team were already contacting me about the next steps. Thanks to this scholarship, I knew that at the end of the road didn't have to be high school graduation. I also knew that I wasn't alone. Even though my parents didn't know how to walk me through the steps, I had the 13th year team. They were able to help me through the process of placement tests, financial aid, and registration. They even took us on a campus tour. The scholarship gave my family and I an opportunity of a better future. I feel much more confident that I can walk my younger siblings through the college of process, and I am proud to say that, that I was even on the honor roll of my first quarter of college. <laughs> I am thrilled to hear that both as a candidate for office and now as our mayor, Jenny Durkin, has been committed to the 13th year Promise Scholarship Program and to expanding it to the Seattle Public School District and to a 14th year. Just like me, there are more students that need the support. Free community college can change their lives too. With the opportunity of a 13th and 14th year of support, my dream is to transfer to the University of Washington. So it is pretty cool to have the chance to introduce Mayor Durkin here her, for her first State of the City address. Prior to becoming a mayor, Durkin was a civic leader and nationally recognized attorney. From 2009 to 2014, she served as a U.S. attorney for the Western District of Washington, becoming the first openly gay U.S. attorney in our country's history. She entered office on November 28th. 2017 with the challenge of making Seattle affordable and exclusive for all. Please join me in the welcoming 
of the 56th Mayor of Seattle, Jenny Durkin. Thank you. That was awesome. You did great. You did great. Thank you so much. Thank you for that great introduction. Council President Harrell, members of the City Council, fellow elected officials, veterans, community leaders, members of the clergy and my family and friends, and thank you, Executive Constantine, for being here. Rainier Beach High School students and staff. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. As I begin my remarks, I would like to recognize that the city of Seattle is named after a great chief, chief self of the Duwamish and Suquamish tribes. We should always remember that all of Seattle resides in the Coast Salish territories. <laughs> to everyone gathered here and to all those watching, and to the 700,000 people that call Seattle home, it is an honor to be with you. To deliver the first State of the City Address is my term as mayor. And don't worry, I'm not going to do five of them all over the city like I did when I was sworn in. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here at Rainier Beach, where everybody is somebody. I want to thank Principal Keith Smith, all the Seattle Public School officials who are here and so committed to the kids, and to the students who are hosting us here at Rainier Beach. President Harrell, I know even though this is your district, it's hard for a Garfield Bulldog to be here. <laughs> but you always put our city first. We're here at Rainier Beach because the students here are at the forefront of change from advocating for social justice, to the 13th year scholar program, to free ORCA passes, Rainier Beach is the place where people come together to get things done. Now, by now you know that I'm the first woman mayor elected in Seattle in almost 100 years. But our last woman, Bertha Landis, when she led Seattle, the mayor didn't give a State of the City address. I know a lot of you wish you were living then. <laughs> so today, we make a little more history together. This is the first time that a woman mayor has delivered Seattle's State of the City address. So to all the young women here today, and any of you that might be watching, I want you to know you are strong. You are smart. You deserve every chance to chase your dreams, whatever those dreams may be. To launch the next great Seattle startup, to play for the Seattle storm. Maybe to grow up to be mayor of Seattle, or the president of the United States. Today, we come together to celebrate our city's strengths, but also to be honest about our challenges. We are in an unprecedented and, for many, painful period of change and growth. But we are strong, resilient, determined, innovative, generous, and, frankly, the best damn city anywhere. Sorry about that, teachers. And like so many people, I don't think we can act fast enough on housing, homelessness, transportation, racial equity, and social justice. Everything we need to be a better future. You may have heard I've already earned a nickname in City Hall, the impatient mayor. 
Seriously, it's what they call me. It's because I am pushing us to take on the challenges we face. First, we must address the crisis of affordability, the growing economic disparities, and homelessness. This is a crisis. It's a crisis that threatens the soul of our city, a crisis that is bigger than us and demands a regional response. Second, as Seattle grows so quickly, we must deliver essential city services better and smarter. Third, we will build safer communities and advance the cause of racial equity and social justice. And together, we will stand up for our progressive values in the face of attacks from the other Washington. And finally, we must do what Seattle does best, seize the awesome opportunities we have to build a better and more vibrant city for the next generation. Our first priority, though, must be to build a more affordable Seattle. As a city and as a region, the crisis of affordability and the growing economic disparity and homelessness is the central challenge we face. It's the moral challenge of our time. We have a booming economy, thriving businesses, and some of the highest wage, coolest jobs anywhere. We are fueling the innovation economy. Yet for too many of us, our families, our neighbors, artists, and small businesses, too many are being forced out of the city that they love. And sadly, look anywhere in our city, and you will see our neighbors living without a home. Thousands are living in transitional housing and shelters. Thousands more are living outside on our streets. And every three days, someone without a home dies in this city. Every three days. People experiencing homelessness are us, moms and dads, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. I have focused on this crisis since my first days in office and I will continue to focus on it for the rest of my term. Now, I wish I could stand up here and tell you we're on the brink of solving our affordability and homeless crisis. But I have to be honest with you. These crises have been years in the making and will not be fixed overnight. While we must take urgent action to improve our city, Lasting progress will take years. There will be times, there will be times when we take two steps forward and then one step back. I know there will be times when you are frustrated with City Hall and with me. Believe me, I get frustrated too. But no matter how daunting our challenge is, what I can promise you, it is Mayor, I will push three things to meet this challenge. Number one, we have to build more low-income and middle-class housing as quickly as we can. <laughs> Two, we have to quickly provide more short-term options that are safe, humane, that, that actually move people into long-term housing. Three, we must create true economic opportunity for everyone. We cannot build a city for the future if it starts with the presumption that so many people have to stay poor. In my first two and a half months, we've already started moving ahead on these three steps. First, we have acted to create more affordable housing. In December, we announced the largest single investment ever in affordable housing, $100,000 million. 
Well, there will be hundreds of new affordable housing units coming online in 2018. In four years, I want to say we built thousands in every part of our city at every economic level. We need to speed up permitting, add density, and expand our housing options in every part of this city, like more mother-in-laws and backyard cottages. Second, in addition to building affordable housing, we must have more short-term shelter that is both accountable and safe. While there's no quick fixes, we can make progress. Over the last five years, our city's annual direct investment in programs to fight homelessness have grown from nearly 40 million to nearly 70 million. This year, the city of Seattle is requiring more accountability of our homeless service providers. We will move, we will move twice as many people into permanent housing as we did last year. To help move more quickly, I propose legislation establishing building a bridge to housing for all. This plan urgently does two things. First, it seeks to prevent homelessness by starting a two-year pilot to provide rental assistance to those people who need help the most because they're on the brink of becoming homeless. Second, it will invest millions in shorter term safer shelter that is more humane. Our shelters and sanctioned encampments are almost full. While we build more long-term housing, we need this funding to help people. Council, let's get this passed immediately so we can help our neighbors living on the edge and get more people off our streets. More of our neighbors need hope. I've seen this firsthand, what hope can do, if we empower people and people that work and care about our communities. I saw this kind of hope in the eyes of the moms and kids I met in Mary's place when I first became mayor. I saw it when I met Bobby, who had been living unsheltered, but is now living in a block project home in Lower Beacon Hill in the backyard of Kim Sherman and Dan Tenenbaum. Good things, good things happen when Seattle comes together to commit to hope and love. And because our community's challenges do not stop at the city limits, we must act as a region. That's why I'm working with King County Executive Dow Constantine. Yes, thank you, Mr. Executive, for all your work. And Nancy Backus, our mayor from Auburn, and community members from across the region. We created one table. And the goal? Truly coordinated regional solutions to address the root causes of homelessness. Because Seattle going it alone will not work. The problem's bigger than us. We must have regional solutions and regional resources. That's how we're going to be able to invest more for addiction and mental health treatment. And in alternatives to incarceration. And for our youth, for our youth experiencing homelessness. By, but solving our affordability and homelessness crisis will require more than just governments working together. It's going to take business, philanthropists, neighborhoods, people of faith, and community organizations. It will take, it will take the continued work of the service providers and the healthcare workers It'll take every one of us, every one of us, stepping up and working together. And so many already are. I want to thank the hundreds of people who work long days for little pay 
at nonprofit organizations that serve our neighbors experiencing homelessness. And some Seattleites do all they can, like Dale Hoff, a general contractor who lives in North Seattle and is building tiny homes in his garage. Or like a Seattle native by John, who sent me a note when I first became mayor saying he wanted to help, and he enclosed a check for $25. We can only do this if we do it together. Let's do it together. The first two steps, the first two steps for tackling affordability, building more long-term affordable housing, and safer, shorter alternatives. But the key, the key to creating long-term solutions to affordability and homelessness is to create true, equitable, economic opportunity. Our city's future is in the young people with us today and across this city. These, these are our future doctors and scientists, our iron workers and electricians, our small business owners and entrepreneurs, maybe the next Bill Gates or the next Barack Obama, right here, right now in Seattle. If young people do their part, they have to know we will do our part. We have to deliver on the promise of opportunity. This is going to require taking some bold and big steps. Now, of course, it's hard to do well in school or at a job if you can't even get there. Right now, too many students in Rainier Beach and on Lake City Way and on other parts of our city are getting to, for getting to school means unsafe trip or a long walk in the cold and rain. That's wrong. Here's what's right. That every student in Seattle has access to affordable, reliable transportation. Now, council members Rob Johnson and Mike O'Brien and others have worked to give free ORCA passes to young people for many years. And last summer, King County Executive Dow Constantine launched a successful 50-cent youth fair project throughout the county. Let's make it better. By this fall, we will put a free year-round ORCA pass in the hands of every one of our 15,000 Seattle Public High School students. And don't worry, Promise Scholars, we're going to do the same for you. We're doing this so students can worry more about their grades and less about how they get places. So that working moms and dads can save a little money each month and know that their children are safe. I look forward to working to the city council to make this a reality for our students for years to come. It's the right thing to do. The time is now. We are going to make it happen. We also have to double down on job creation in those parts of our city that have been most left behind, particularly in our communities of color. You know, our economy is changing more quickly than we can adjust to it. Many jobs of today will disappear, and many jobs of tomorrow have even not been invented yet but they're going to be here in a blink of an eye. In the next five years, Washington State alone is set to create 740,000 job openings. 740,000 job openings. Most of them will require a post-high school education. But today, 
almost 70% of Washington high school students don't get post-secondary credentials by the age of 26. That's wrong. We need to help Seattle high school graduates get those jobs. We must harness the brilliance in our schools to shape the new economy. We can do this. I know we can. This starts with my Seattle Promise College tuition program. We need to make college a reality for every Seattle Public School graduate by investing in two free years of college education and support. This builds on the success of the 13th year scholarship program, expands it, and reimagines it. So if you're a 13th year scholar and you're here this morning, could you please stand? This is our progressive values made real. Thank you, scholars. And promise scholars, I'm thrilled to tell you the city can commit to a 14th year for you. The Seattle Promise Program will help and economically empower our next generation. It will open doors. Many will be the first in their family to go to college. Barriers to college often span generations and for too long have held back communities of color, immigrants, and refugees. <laughs> Seattle Promise will change the lives of our young people and those young people will change our city. You have already heard how it changed the life of Diana Batista, who introduced me. And it has changed the life of people like Musa Abdi and Abdiasas Ibrahim. Both Musa and Abdiasas grew up in refugee camps in Kenya. They were lucky to move with their families to Seattle. The transition is never easy. Both worked hard and ended up enrolling in the South Seattle College as 13th year scholars. That's right. That's right. And that year of free college helped change the arc of their already incredible lives. Today, Musa is enrolled in UW's public health program. Yeah. And Abdiasis is studying bioengineering at UW. <laughs> Moose is headed east of the mountains to Wazoo, where he's been accepted into the pharmacy program. <laughs> and Abdiasis, he plans to apply to medical school next year. <laughs> now, Musa couldn't be here today. He's got a big chemistry exam. <laughs> but Abdiasis is here, back at his alma mater, Rainier Beach. Can you stand up just for a minute? You're an amazing young man. <laughs> this is what we can do for our young people. This shows just two people who can show the power of what free college can do for them, for the families, and for our city. Yes, we can. That's right, yes we can. And that's why I am committed to expanding what's already working in the 13th year. We are on the path to two years of free college and support for every Seattle public school student. And college is just part of it. We have to create real career paths for our city's young people, including more registered apprenticeships, internships, and good summer jobs.
just last week, I joined with the county and the Port of Seattle to announce more investments in workforce training. But we won't stop. Our kids have to have a shot at any job in this town they want to have. They can build the buildings, work in the buildings, or own the buildings. Now, another key, obviously, in opening doors to opportunity is our families and education levy. And I'm so happy to have so many of the committed school board here and the superintendent. In the coming months, we as a city will have lots of conversations about it. And during those conversations, I want you to know what are my three core priorities. Number one, preserving pre-K and early learning. <laughs> Kids have to come to kindergarten ready to learn. Two, we must try new approaches to close the opportunity gap for students of color. We have one of the worst in the nation, and what we're doing is not working quickly enough. Three, we got to make sure every kid in Seattle Public Schools has the opportunity to go to college free. Because just like real education doesn't start at age five, it doesn't end in high school. If we focus on these three things with our levy, we will be creating real economic opportunity for the next generation. Economic opportunity and fairness also means we will keep protecting our workers through fair wages and fair rights. <laughs> Seattle led the way on the $15 minimum wage. Now. Now it's time to lead the way on a Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights. This year, I intend to work with Councilmember Teresa Mosqueda, employers, labor, and others to make this a reality. The time for talk is over. It's time to get it done. These are the steps I will take to combat the challenge of affordability and build an economic opportunity for us. And every day, I will live up to my nickname, the impatient mayor. <laughs> so let's talk about the second priority, the need to deliver basic city services. Just as our growth has made it hard for the middle class, it has made it hard for our city workers to deliver their basic services. We have to work smarter, and we have to work quicker. After all, you pay our bills. And to our city employees, I know we need to give you a safe place to work, free of discrimination and harassment. We have a lot of important work to do together, to deliver clean and reliable electricity, to make sure that the garbage, compost, and recycling gets picked up, to fill the potholes. <laughs> okay, we know the priority within the priority. <laughs> to deliver the fire and police services that keep everyone safe. In a growing city like ours, it's not that easy. But here's the good news. There are 11,000 public servants trying to make our city a better place to live. These are people like Singh Ni, nee, who works at our city's Department of Transportation. Singh has been working for the people of Seattle for almost two decades. And do you know where he was on December 24th as the snow began to fall? Many of you were with family, sitting down with loved ones, but he was somewhere else. Like more than 50 of his colleagues at the Seattle Department of Transportation, he was working to make sure our streets were safe 
to drive on. He came in early to make sure that the snowplows were ready, and then he worked all night long on a shift in his snowplow to make the streets safe and passable. Like so many in government, he knew you were counting on him, and so he delivered. So to all the city employees, to my amazing cabinet, we expect a lot from you, but we know you can do it. We know you'll get it done. We also know that our city departments will have to do more with less. Our significant economic growth has allowed us to increase our spending in recent years. But these boom times won't last forever, and our current spending isn't sustainable under our current projections. Unfortunately, a deficit is on the horizon. And that's why, in preparing next year's budget, I will be asking all city departments to recognize we have to live within our city's means. It's going to require tough choices about where we invest and where we have to cut. But just as our city's growth has put new pressures on our city's services, it's also put it on a transportation system. We will get this done. It's no secret our traffic is bad and our buses are full. The bad news is traffic's going to get worse before it gets better. Mega projects will lead to mega gridlock. The good news is more people are using transit and fewer people are driving alone in their cars. And we need, we need to keep that trend going. So though traffic will get more challenging, I pledge to you, we will continue to get more creative we will make necessary investments, and we will improve these numbers. We will find ways to bust through gridlock and to make it safe for pedestrians and cyclists. <laughs> Along with delivering basic services, we will deliver the most essential service of all, a safe and just community, keeping our city safe is an enormous task. Last year, our fire department responded to nearly 100,000 incidents, including 17,000 fires. They transported 6,000 people in potentially life-threatening situations to the hospital. And the Seattle Police Department responded to more than 400,000 calls and took more than 1,200 guns off the street. Our fire and police departments have saved lives, helped victims, and worked with neighborhoods on strategies to make everybody safe. But despite the hard work, the sacrifice of our first responders, we have to acknowledge that parts of our city do not feel safe and that too many young people are taken by violence. All too often, this is because of gun violence. We will not accept this. <laughs> Seattle residents must be safe in their neighborhoods and in their homes. Yes. Our kids must be safe on the way to school and in their schools. Schools are meant for joy and learning. They are not meant for lockdowns and mass shootings. <laughs> together, together we will fight for common sense gun safety laws to protect our city, our neighborhoods, our schools, and our children. We will also continue to fight for racial equity and social justice.
In one of my first official acts as mayor, I reaffirmed our city's commitment to the Race and Social Justice Initiative. And I will push it until my last day in office. Because we cannot have true economic opportunity unless we stand with community-based organizations and dismantle structural racism. We have to be honest that it's real. And we have to have the courage to face it, or we will never defeat it. A safer and more just city also requires a police department that protects, serves, and is trusted. And in January, we took another step towards achieving this goal of reform for our Seattle Police Department. That step came when a federal judge confirmed that we have made important progress under the consent decree. It came after decades of community organizations demanding change and after hard work by SPD officers and civilians. Our improved use of force policies require training de-escalation and helping people in mental health crisis. We now have rigorous investigations when force is used and community accountability when things go wrong. And yet, we're not done. We must continue to get better. Lasting reform requires deep cultural change. And a critical next step is having the right permanent chief of police, someone who is committed to the reform process that we have begun. And I want to ensure that your voice, as residents of Seattle, is heard in the chief selection process. Our search committee reflects our city, and they will have a number of events throughout our city. But beginning today, anybody here or listening can go to seattle.gov and take a survey to tell me what you think we need in a new chief. We have a lot of work to do. Are we up to the daunting task of building this safer, more just, more inclusive city of the future? Yes, we are. Yes. Absolutely. We will do it because we are guided by our shared values. Standing up for those progressive values is the fourth focus of my time as mayor. We believe every person is born with dignity and promise. And they deserve real respect and real opportunity. A person's value is not based on her net worth, or the country of birth, or the color of skin, or the gender of the person they love. We believe, we believe we're all better off when prosperity is shared and is not just for the few. And we know, we don't just believe, we know we are stronger when we are a truly inclusive place. Those are American values, and those are Seattle values. <laughs> Seattle will stand up to be a safe and welcoming city, especially with Donald Trump as our president. immigrant and refugee neighbors believe in the promise of America, and we will deliver on that promise. Our children shouldn't just feel welcome here, they should thrive here. And unlike the other Washington, we actually believe in science. And we know that climate change is real. It's hurting our economy. It's threatening this gorgeous place that we love. 
and it's jeopardizing our children's future. Seattle's become a national leader in carbon emissions reduction, protecting our environment and boosting clean energy. You know, City of Seattle's leading the way. We have one of the largest electric vehicle fleets in the entire country. But there's more we can do and must do. This includes making our buildings as green as possible. In the coming months, I will propose legislation to create a new citywide pilot that will encourage the building of 20 of the most sustainable buildings anywhere. We'll show it can be done to scale and we'll create a new model for green cities. And when we talk about the environment, we will not forget that the burdens of environmental disaster almost always fall on those who are most marginalized. True, true environmental progress means environmental justice and livable communities for people of color and for people who are struggling in our economy. Amen. South Park, Georgetown, South Seattle, I have heard you. I know efforts of groups like the Duwamish River Cleanup Coalition, the Duwamish Valley Youth Corps, and advocates by Paulina Lopez are so vital to making Seattle a better, more just place to live. Thank you. Thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you for your work, and thank you for demanding that we listen. Unfortunately, this president and his administration want to keep taking our city backwards. In my first two and a half months, they've already threatened our city with multiple legal fights. So to the lesser Washington, let me be clear. <laughs> when the lives of people in the environment we cherish in Seattle are under attack, we will never, ever back down. You won't win against me, against our city council, against our attorney, Pete Holmes, and you won't win against the city of Seattle. So just be smart. Keep your hands off, Seattle. Here in Seattle, we don't wait for others to tell us what our future is going to look like. We don't wait for a better future to come to us. We invent it. We make it happen. We create it. We build it. And that's the fifth and final priority during my time as mayor, seizing the awesome opportunities we have to build a more vibrant city for the future. We have always been that city that invents the future. And we always will be. We're the city that didn't just survive a great fire. We got better. We were the jumping off point for the gold rush. We pretty much invented and then reinvented air travel. First the airplane, and then booking it online. <laughs> Coffee on every corner. The personal computer revolution. The cloud. Bone marrow transplants, Seattle. And today in 2018, we are literally rebuilding, reinventing, and reimagining our city for the future. Just look at our waterfront. Next year will be the year of the waterfront. We already opened up Pike Place Market's Market Plus project. If you haven't been, go. We broke ground on rebuilding the new concert pier at Pier 62. Looking forward to it. And in 2019, next year, the Alaskan Way Viaduct will finally come down, and it will be amazing. I know, get the last view rides in, but it will be amazing. 
It will open the door for a waterfront for all. 20 acres of new parks and public spaces. It'll reconnect Elliott Bay to Seattle in our maritime heritage. It will make it a city of the global future. Everyone will know Seattle by its waterfront. Another amazing opportunity, Seattle Center. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in December, I signed an agreement that paves the way for the rebirth of Seattle Center as a vibrant economic arts and cultural engine for decades to come. It will include a new modern arena. And as I said that day, that agreement is the best path to recruiting and bringing an NHL team to Seattle. And to making sure that the Seattle Storm play at the Seattle Center into the next generation. And yes, to bringing back our Sonics. Rainier Beach, can you imagine? Nate the Great Robinson should be playing in gold and green in our hometown. Already, we've taken another big step down that path to bringing professional hockey to Seattle. The application went into the NHL, and I'm telling you, mark it on your calendars. Starting March 1 at 10 a.m., you can make your deposit for season tickets. So let's meet there when the puck drops. In close, it's true. What you've heard is true. I love Seattle to my bones. Yeah. And the main reason I love this city is the people that live here and that we do the right thing because it's part of who we are. And I know that we will do the right thing and build a more affordable, inclusive future. Will it be easy? No. It will take grit. It will take a willingness to try new things, to innovate, and to really understand what is working and what is failing. Above all, it will take all of us working together, knowing that we can be better, and asking, how can we do it better? Know this, Seattle. I will bet on you every time. I will stand with you every time. And I will work with you to realize that future our children deserve. So let's resolve together that next year we can look each other in the eye and we can say, the state of our city is more just. The state of our city is even stronger. That life for all who call Seattle home is better because of our resolve, our actions, and our love. Thank you so much, Seattle.